Hey everyone, Carl Kadim here with another Liquid Lungs devlog. A parkour trick shooter I have been developing in Unreal Engine for the last couple of months. I've recently been working on improving my level design and creating editor tools to help reliably create level pieces in a sustainable manner. The old design was long due for an update. I experimented with keeping the more washed out colors and adding more details to make it more realistic, but I couldn't fit the style that I like or that I thought would be possible to reproduce reliably for an entire game. So I decided to go with a more clean and colorful color palette, with lots of plastic looking materials as you can see here. And it takes a lot of inspiration from Miro's Edge styles, but leaves out parts of the realism and adds more arcadiness. It fits well into my game, as the plan for the game is to be an arcadey, fast paced shooter that takes place in some type of outlawed blood sporting event. It is still a work in progress and I have much left to improve, but I'm very happy with the results so far. If you're enjoying this series and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the like button too, it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support. One thing I had to figure out was how walls and floors would be created in a convenient way to be reproducible for the entire game. I want my building process to minimize the amount of mistakes I would make while building and quickly letting me change multiple segments of the level at the same time while improving my FIPS, or even updating multiple levels at the same time. A common way to build levels in games, especially in AAA title, is to first create a block out of a level. That is when you quickly throw together a bunch of grey boxes just to be able to test the gameplay of the level. Great for advanced levels with a lot of detail, but I found this way of level design to be too slow for my type of game that uses a more arcadey style of levels. Plus, I'm on the only one working on it. Instead opted for creating level pieces that are controlled with code, that can be easily and quickly changed using their properties, letting me automate non-creative parts of the building process. I'm used to using Blender, but decided that my simple wall and floor mesh pieces could be done directly in Unreal Engine, also, because I thought it'd be fun to try out this new modeling tool. So, before getting the idea to create a more automated build process, I first created these wall pieces with different setups for different material patterns. I set them up in a way so they would fit and scale together using certain editor snap settings. I then keep them in the same folder in the world editor so that it would be possible to mark all of them at the same time and drop new materials on them, but this felt very clumsy and there was a lot of room for mistakes, misaligning corners and so on. Also very inconvenient for major updates to the same theme as each individual piece would have to be updated, and it would be possible to switch out meshes to another wall pattern by mass selecting it, but it was still not optimal. And uh, to mention the mess of adding a door frame and matching that into a wall and so on. And of course there are many different good ways to handle these problems, but the way I solved this was by starting to take a look at splines, which is basically a list of coordinates following a path. I created a C++ class, building spline, to hold my new automation logic with a blueprint wallmaster inheriting from it. I should probably turn my building tools into a plugin separate from the main project at some point, but this will have to do for now. First, I just had one spline which allowed me to expand the walls horizontally with proper snapping of the wall width. I then added a second spline component for the vertical direction allowing me to have multiple floors. After that, I added more properties that could be controlled, like allowing for adding a door frame or a hole at any index along the wall. It also has the ability to add a door blueprint to the door frame. Here the possibilities are endless with adding new things that could appear along the walls, but this will be fine for now. I also added a system for adding corner mesh pieces automatically to spice things up a little bit. This was all good and all, uh, but I did need a floor. I found that the somewhat new Unreal Dynamic Mesh system was perfect for this. Unfortunately, they are not supported for use in C++. I'm sure it's possible to use them in here, but uh, I follow Epic's recommendation and just went all in on blueprints for this segment. So with that, I first set up a system that takes in the floor mesh pieces and stretches it between all the spline puffs. Very nice. One thing to note here though is that the dynamic mesh created won't be exported when running the game separate from the editor, so at the end step of creating the mesh it has to be exported to a static mesh. 
So I had to set up a system for handling it properly, so there wouldn't be a bunch of random static meshes lying around. In the end, I settled with having a generate button, never showing the dynamic mesh, and creating and overwriting the static mesh floor as needed. I set it up in a way that allows me to have planes on every floor selecting by using these convenient editor buttons. But just having nice planes won't always do it. There are many scenarios where you want to have holes in the plane to allow stairs to go up in it and so on. So to solve this I created a box cutter tool. It allows me to for moving a box around on my mesh and when I generate a new floor it will now cut a hole in the dynamic mesh prior to creating the static mesh using a the dynamic mesh bool tool. And bam, we can now build houses with holes as we please. Later I also want to set up walls as dynamic meshes being converted to static meshes so I can cut holes in them the same way and create windows and whatnot but that's a project for a rainy day. Now to the best part, the convenience of creating the theme. Basically I've split it up in a bunch of data assets, they all hold information about meshes and materials. The wall meshes are previously created meshes with the Unreal Builder tool, where they have their material set differently so they are basically deciding on the wall's pattern. And the buildings have multiple floors, including a top floor, and as I want to keep a consistent style along the levels I also have a theme bundle, which basically takes in a bunch of these theme data assets and use them in a proper order on the floors. This makes it super fast and convenient to try out themes on entire levels. So this is nice, but of course it also creates some limitations on what can be created. I see this limitation as quite good, as it forces me to stick with a consistent style. But the tool is still in its early development and there's a lot of work left to be done on it, like adding the wall cutting functionality and windows like I talked about earlier. And most of the decorations are currently outside of this system, as well and are manually placed, like the pipes, stairs, uh, ventilations and so on. These destructible glasses are made using chaos physics, I'll probably have an entire separate video about that in the future, and also add more destructible terrain later, but uh, now you won't be able to destroy entire levels, I'm sorry. But that's it, as usual I haven't decided on the next video's topic yet, but it is probable that it will be about the enemy AI, finally, in the next video. If you have any thoughts about the project or the video, please leave a comment down below. And again, remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And please like this video to help grow the channel.